sort. It's impossible. What Peter Lackley? No one will ever believe me. Assembled and ready for action, Chief. Our sugar reserves have been almost totally wiped out. They may be aiming for other agricultural areas. It's gotta be the work of Planet Spectra. What a sweet tooth. Let's find out who's running it. Hey, look what I just found. Refinery tanks. There's a whole factory in here. Escape hatch. trying to do put this sugar eating beast out of business we haven't got time tiny jason and key up are waiting for us in the phoenix let's go change the negative polarity and reset now go we've only got three minutes to make it a narrow squeak scientist on board that ship, Professor Wild. Spectre would like to get their hands on him, I'm sure. cruise ship and Professor Wilde. For the moment, he and the ship's passengers all seem to be safe. Once again, Spectra has managed to slip by our scanners and establish a base on Earth. He, he was on the verge of a big breakthrough in genetic engineering. That means organ regeneration. Well, what it really means is like if a human lost an arm or a leg or even a heart, he could grow another one stronger and better. <laughs> From here on in, the scene's all trouble. I've contacted Mark and confirmed to him that Princess's hunch was right. Something evil is going on in that spectral hospital. I gave you my secret formula, but you can't use it on her. Those bad men took me away from my grandfather and gave me something that made me sleepy. on molecular genetics had gone wrong, accidentally causing the death of his daughter and leaving him crippled. That's the formula Professor Wilde gave to Zoltar, a formula not for his longer life, but for his destruction.
the capital city of Riga, a planet millions of miles away, but similar to Earth. It's a member of our intergalactic federation and badly in need of help. Everything is in ruin. Not a person in sight. It's too quiet. Like a spider web waiting for a victim to light on it. And you can't see the spider, but you know he's there someplace. We're surrounded. Blast off! It's the new form of life we have created. Indestructible, possessed of incredible powers. Soon we shall have all of Riga in our grasp, and then Earth. Nothing will be able to withstand the creature of a thousand eyes. I'm getting terrible input on my telecom scanner. Spectre's newest weapon is destroying planet Riga. It's a living, pulsating mass of some unknown biological structure. The beat's gotta be the base. <laughs> Soltar's computer. Obviously, he is attempting to sabotage all of our computers. Maybe even Zark. The only way to prevent him from destroying our automated systems is to reprogram the new metamorphosizer with this microfilm neutralizer. This is the secret design of the metamorphosizer. You did a remarkable job all by yourself. I go for it. Stay close. I may need to get out in a hurry. Good luck, Commander. Stay away from that computer. It's over, Zoltar. In the name of the Federation of Peaceful Planets, I'm placing you under arrest for crimes against the galaxy. Never! I promise you, this doesn't end it! Battle of the Planets.
Gotham City is under attack by giant alien beetles. I've sounded the alert, and the people are all safe in shelters, but the material destruction is mounting by the minute. I think I can blow it right out of the sky. Sorry, Commander, but that's out. That's out? But why? It's a perfect target. Because my multiplex sensors tell me that Cheops aboard that beetle. Oh, no. And I'm afraid so. To give you explicit instructions on how to recharge their ebbing energy potential. It will not be pleasant for them, but they will survive. By using the fantastic energy that exists in every human organism, I shall rule the universe. It's Zoltar's most fiendish idea yet. He can power those destructive bugs by draining human beings of every last ounce of their energy. He'll be able to wreak havoc on the entire galaxy. What is this? Brave, aren't you? Picking on kid. Fools, don't let them get away. Hurry. Let's get out of here. to the center. Battle of the planets. G-Force. Evacuate. Red alert. Evacuate. Sonar reports tell me that a giant whale caused those explosions at the refinery. Zark, whales don't attack refineries. I just verified it. Contact the rest of G-Force and rendezvous with the Phoenix at once. Big Ten. its mother. Well, at least G-Force discovered that the migrating whales weren't to blame for what happened in Bay City. Keop and the baby whale have become best of friends. So we just follow that little blip right where Nambu leads us. Precisely. And hopefully that will be the Spectra base. <laughs> Nambu, G-Force! Those two fellows left fast when they lost their guns. Looks like we found the secret spectra base. Whale subs are loaded and ready for attack against migrating whale species. Excellent scouting. Soon there will be no whales left in the oceans of Earth. <laughs> I don't know how they found our base, but not even G-Force can stop us now. Proceed with the Great Whale Hunt immediately. Wanted power. It was a mistake. You must get to the horses quickly and set the self-destruct buttons on their backs. We've got to get them aboard the Phoenix. Full throttle forward. Sure. Enemy spaceship closing in. Attention, everyone. Prepare to abandon all ships immediately.
Zark 7 identified two Spectra agents in the crowd. They were keeping a very close eye on Doriari through binoculars. Now we know why. Watch. These are in fact, the number eight horse is not an ordinary horse. A device has been planted in the hoof. Notice the unusual way the horse leaps. This gives some reason. Why else would Spectra be interested? A man who can invent powerful mechanical animals would be just what Spectra is looking for. We'll check him out. Act fast. I won't horse! I'll be a millionaire! <laughs> Who are you? Never mind that. We're taking you on a little trip to another planet. I'm not going anywhere. Don't be stubborn. It'll be just like a little vacation. I'm staying right here. This is my home. You have no other choice. We know you to be a man of great genius. We of Spectra appreciate such genius. If you agree to work for us, you will be a very rich man. And if I don't, then I very much fear you will soon be a forgotten man. If my genius is so important to you, I demand that you make me ruler of Spectra. It is done. I hereby decree that you, Professor Doriarty, are the new ruler of Spectra in place of Zoltar. You will... <laughs> Spectra's headquarters. Okay, team, let's wait. Wanted power. It was a mistake. You must get to the horses quickly and set the self-destruct buttons on their backs. We've got to get them aboard the Phoenix. <laughs> Horses are gone, and Earth is safe. Battle of the Planets. Ah, there it is. That's Aquatica, an all-water planet about 50 light years from Ursa Minor. Since there's no land, Aquatica is used as the major repair center for the entire intergalactic defense force. That thing, what is it? Seven's Arc 7 has been in constant contact. Spectra has taken the planet. We're going to send G-Force to deal with the situation. Enemy aircraft approaching. Good. I have been waiting for the Phoenix. Now we shall rid ourselves of the earthlings who call themselves G-Force. This deep freeze weapon you invented for us, Sergeant, had better work. Too late!
Sox freeze is working. Center City. I've just had time to warn all citizens to rush to the bombproof shelters. I'd love to take a crack at it, Chief. That's up to your commander to decide. No, I don't think so. I'm sorry. I understand. Well, I don't. It's not like you to chicken out in an emergency like this, Mark. I want to know what we're up against first. Gears on. Anything on the UFO? Zark located it. We're going after the space intruder, Mark. I didn't give that order yet, Princess. Mark? We're turning back. Nothing we can do here. No go, Mark. I'm in command now. Take her down. Pretend no. Hey. We're not taking the bait. I'm giving the orders. Turn back. That's it. A brilliant idea. And so simple. We're building a giant magnet whose force will trap the enemy spaceship. I don't know why I didn't think of it immediately. It's turn back. Smell a rock. We have to get that thing turned around somehow. And there's only one way to do it. You mean, get inside that thing? Know any other way, Jason? you were trapped in that awful thing the magnetic attraction was so strong i was afraid you weren't coming back don't worry princess i'll always come back your magnetic attraction is a lot stronger I don't know, Dr. Rainey. I never heard anything like that before. It's vaguely familiar. It seems to be coming from that direction. Well, in this neighborhood, it could be almost anything. Three of our top scientists have mysteriously vanished in the last few hours. Is it? It's not a joking matter, Keop. It's going to be your job to see that those scientists who are still with us stay with us. These are plans for the new secret installations, Professor Lambert. Center Neptune would like force fields set up around them. Guards, emergency! Too late, Professor. We want those plans. You would have been wiser not to come out to us. And you would have been wiser not to come down to Earth from planet spectrum. Earth will soon belong to us, and we won't have to make the trip anymore. Yes. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be working. <laughs> Crazy music. been this 
giant. He's just a statue. You sure that bump on the head didn't make you imagine it, Princess? You don't have to take my word for it. Ask Keop. He was there. That's right. I've been expecting you ever since your intergalactic scientists began to disappear. Welcome, at last. I thought it would be you, Zoltar. Allow me to introduce a large friend I believe you've been looking for. for sure. The giant comes from that mountain where all the faces are. I still say Amelia's an artist, not a spy for Spectra. There she is, and there's our fiery giant's face. Right. Let's move in. artificial volcanic eruption. This must be where the giant takes his hot lava baths. <laughs> so, that's how they transmute the rock face into a fiery giant. I see now why you thought I was involved, Jason. job, Amelia. My father spent years sculpting those figures, and I intend to carry on. I'll just begin at the beginning again. The All right, let's talk about Battle of the Planets on this beautiful box set here. It's a PAL set. Um, I think this came from Australia. To my knowledge, it's not available in any way, shape, or form anywhere else around the world. It's got a little weight to it, too. It's, a, it's the complete series, all 85 episodes. Um, I had uh broken it down i watched uh, all of uh uh volume one and a little bit of volume two on here that's what i showed for you this is actually the last volume um now the plants is a show that came out in 1978 the fall of 78 uh it was uh taken from the japanese show gotcha man they uh edited out some scenes uh, got a new english soundtrack added a few things like the uh sevens arc seven and one rover run Seven's Arc 7 was obviously a take on R2-D2. Star Wars had just come out uh, a year earlier, and that was the big rage at the time, so they thought they'd jump on that uh, with this. And you know what? It worked. Um, I remember I was very, very young. I remember I was in school, and uh, I saw some kid at the, at the lockers after school and saying, yeah, I watched this space show uh, after, you know, at 3.30 or whatever it was at home, and I was like, what is he talking about? And uh, I went home that day, and I tuned in, and there it was, Battle of the Planets, and I was hooked. I can remember as kids, um, it was the rage at our school. This was a huge, very popular show. Um, we used to play G-Force at recess and everything. It was just a, a fun show. Now, 
then it, it just kind of disappeared after a few years. Um, and then I remember, you know, as the 80s went on and uh, I was always very nostalgic for it, fond of it. It just wasn't available in any way, shape or form. It wasn't broadcast anywhere that I was aware of anyway, because I would have taped it um, had the opportunity. Had I had, I had the opportunity. Then I want to say around 1992, three, four, something like that, uh, six volumes of this came out on VHS, two episodes each. I think they may have been the first 12 episodes. I'm not sure. But of course, I snatched those up immediately. And my God, I hadn't seen them in forever. And I thought it was fantastic. Now, I watched them all at that time. I haven't seen them since. So it's been 30 years since I watched this. And I'm basically... Uh, uh, reassociating myself with this uh, with this series again, and I have quite enjoyed it over the last month or so. Where I've been watching this, um, there's a seems to be a similar pattern with these episodes. It's that um, uh, Zoltar sends over some sort of weird monster, a giant bug, a giant mummy, a giant sphere, just uh, some weird ship, some sort of giant monstrosity, and then. Um, it attacks uh, Capital City or wherever the hell they are or, or what some other planet in within the Federation. G-Force has to go and find a way to thwart it. They always do. And then uh, it, uh, it dies and Zoltar, who may or may not be on the scene at the time, says, uh, you may have won this time, but you will never catch me or something like that. And then he always manages to get away every single episode. He's gone. He's like the wind. So there you go. And then rinse and repeat, and we'll see you tomorrow. Um, if you look on IMDb, it shows actual release dates for all of these episodes. One week apart, starting, I think, in September of 1978. That's just not how it was. It, the September of 78, or the fall of 78, is correct. I remember, like I said, when I was in school at that time. But this was on every day. It was broadcast like a rerun, like Brady Bunch and Gilligan's Island and the Flintstones, every single day. So they had taken all 78 or 85 episodes, I'm sorry, and, and, and just... Uh, threw them out there in syndication. There wasn't one week at a time. It just wasn't like that, at least not in the United States. Now, maybe somewhere else, I don't know. But in the United States, it was kind of like Netflix was does sometimes. They just spit out all the episodes at once, and there you go. Just got to wait one day at a time, basically. So there you go. That is Battle of the Planets. Again, very, very nostalgic show for me. Is it campy? Sure, but it's a lot of fun. I like it. Um, again, I had never seen Gotcha Man. I still haven't seen Gotcha Man. Apparently, uh, they toned down some of the violence that are in this, but people still do die in these episodes. Not G-Force, of course, but there are you know other citizens who die in this show, and it's that's unusual for a cartoon, but hey, it was a good show. So anyway, check it out, Battle of the Planets. Um, when I looked for this at one point about five, six years ago, I found a box set from Australia, and it was on eBay, I think, for $800. Um, it was very rare. It was the only thing, only only box set out there. And I'm like, I, I I can't I can't justify paying that much. I don't have the, the money to, to splurge on that. Um, and then uh, maybe a couple years after that, I decided to take a token look again, see if it's out there. And I saw one box set. I think it was about two hundred and twenty, two hundred fifty dollars or so. And you know what? I thought I think I can swing that. So I snatched it up again. It was the only one available on eBay at that time. I looked today. I did not see one. Um, so this thing is very, very rare. I don't know if any. Actually, I take that back. I think there was a couple of DVDs released uh, stateside here. Um, probably the same. 12 episodes that were released on VHS. But if you want the whole series, you're probably going to pay a few hundred dollars to perhaps several hundred dollars for this uh, wonderful looking box set. And I'm glad I have it. So anyway, check it out. Leave some comments. I'll leave a link to something down below. And uh, let me know what you think about Battle of the Planets. Watch it. Bye.